Interaction design is the structure and the behavior of interactive products and services, and how the user interacts with them. As a 25-year-old youngster, Osman Koch is an interaction designer. But like any of us, he too struggles with the relentless flow of new information and devices in our technology-saturated culture. And he recognizes the pressure placed upon us to instantly adapt to this society. So in protest to this, Osman finds his own way of using electronics, which, he has, become, which has become the focus of his artistic and his professional career. Blessed with a talent for sharing his knowledge and his enthusiasm with others, Osman gives workshops on interaction design, one of which I was fortunate enough to take part in the last couple of days. Take a Leak, which was uh, inspired by a room full of electronics and design students with not enough female influence, was uh, what we came up with. If you haven't checked it out already, please do so after, uh, after the, uh, the talk. So uh, please uh, welcome uh, Osman Koch to the stage. Thanks, Olin, for introducing me. Oh, let me first a bit adapt to, to stage. Well, um, I'm not an obsessive compulsive person, but I like defining stuff, and I like having, having this logical structure in my head. Uh, but this is getting harder and harder for me every day, because there are lots of new things coming up, and my adaptation rate is really inadequate. Um, and to be honest, I blame new media for this. But it shouldn't be like this, because I was born digital. I had my first Amiga 500 when I was six, and after my father passed away when I was 10, I was literally raised by computers. And besides this, I'm an electronics engineer, I had my master's on mechatronics, and I also have given uh, my teaching assistant duties on computer science classes. So there's not much, there's not much more thing that I can do to adapt to this. Uh, but new media, well, and I'm having problems with the most fundamental stuff, like uh, distinguishing between what's real and what's not. Uh, yes. <laughs> As I said, I'm a digital native, and uh, but this new media stuff, whatever it is, it is messing up with our perception of reality. So I thought about this, and uh, well, basically we perceive reality. Is my sound okay, or is it a bit? Oh, all right. So is it better like this? Okay. Um, as I said, we perceive reality based on time and space. So, but uh, with all the walls are becoming screens, and we have multifunctional furnitures, and we have wall washers and stuff, I'm really not sure that I'm in the same room as I was before. And also, in a more, for a more global exa example, I can receive a package from Hong Kong to my house in three days after one click. But if you do the math, Hong Kong is 8,000 kilometers from where I live. And three days is 72 hours. So after my click, my package starts approaching me with 111 kilometers per hour. So it's, it's just insane. Uh, this, this was the space part. But what about the time part? Let me tell you how I uh, messed up with my mom's perception of time. Well, my mom loves watching TV series, and she watches like five of them at the same time. Constantly zapping, uh, she somehow, I don't know how, but she somehow manages to understand them all. But the problem is, my mom has to wait for the advertisement breaks to uh, satisfy her thirst for a cup of tea. So recently, I taught her how to watch them from her laptop so that now she can stop the series whenever she wants, start them whenever she wants, uh, fast forward, rewind, so she has all the control of, of time. But this is, it doesn't only stop here, because now that she's free from the TV channel scheduling, she has to manage all her time. And this is a big chunk of duty that we all need to adapt to. Uh, let me check my notes. So this time manipulation stuff, uh, was enabled when the image source and the image sync were combined into one body. Uh, but this doesn't only stop in the time manipulation stuff, it's also the real-time image manipulation. So it may be funny to see yourself on a screen with a Mario mustache, but when you apply this technology to the news, everything becomes untrustworthy. 
So, at this age, if everything is untrustworthy, what can we trust? Well, personally, I believe personal experience is the only thing that we, that we can trust now. And <clears throat> as, a, as an interaction designer, uh, I thought about how we interact with the products. And, well, there used to be some references about how we use the products, at least user manuals. We are all adventurous enough not to use the user manuals, but at least it's there. So if you think about the earliest and the most simplest product, let's say the knife, the manufacturers manufactured it and they gave us the user's manual with it. So, but if I use the uh, knife wrongly, I cut myself. So that scar will be the constant reminder of my mistake. But today's products are becoming more and more social every day. So uh, even if Mark had predicted more than 200 million users, there, there is not enough technology to simulate more than 200 million users' behavior, uh, which creates the thing that now the social product producers don't know how their products will be used. So this opened a new perspective for me. But, so now we are all in the same trial and error phase. So we try new stuff, we try creating new uh, digital social identities and stuff. We fail, we lose friends, we succeed and we gather some crowds who is following us. But uh, in this phase, in, at this age, we are more afraid to make mistakes because we have all the data that we need. Like, uh, if something that I search doesn't exist in the fifth page of my Google search, I start to believe that that data does not even exist. So, as I said, we are more afraid to make mistakes and we become this control freaks with, combined with the, that we have all the initiative for, for our own life's time, time management. So, after some periods of paranoia and self-loathing, I had enough. And I took initiative and I thought that if the manufacturers don't know how to use their products and if I can access a lot of data, I decided to combine them and use products for different purposes. Like, if I'm dancing at a club, why should I... Well, I'm, I, all, I, I suck at dancing, so why should I try to keep up with the music also? Why shouldn't the music try to keep up with me? Or why should an EEG device should used only just to diagnose sleep apnea and not to change the scenario of the film that I'm watching. And also as our installation here, maybe our urine can be used as a musical instrument. So uh, throughout my exhibitions, throughout the exhibitions that I participated, I saw that I saw a common thing in, in, in the audience that they were all surprised. And I think that's what is but that's, I think that's the missing piece in our puzzle, in our lives. Because, because that we are control maniacs, we don't have a room for surprises anymore. But, I, and if we had much surprises, I think we would get bored of it. So that's why we like it probably. But, um, but we should have surprises, because surprise is fun, surprise is unexpected. Surprise forces you to improvise, and improvisation is the most natural form of expressing yourself. It may be, uh, it may not be optimal, it may not be perfect, but it's definitely, it's definitely natural. So if we have, if we are, let's say, time lords in our, for our lives, we should create some spaces for surprises and let them happen, or at least wait for them, and hope you had enough coffee to take the leak after my talk. Thank you. <laughs>